G'day folks, welcome to my beginner's guide for the Mavic 2 Pro. Now this guide is geared to those who have never flown a drone before, maybe you've just picked up a brand new Mavic 2 Pro, maybe you're thinking about getting one and just kind of want to check things out first. We're going to take you right from the very beginning, from taking it out of the box, setting it all up, updating the firmware, right to taking your very first flight. If you're a seasoned pilot, you might want to go ahead and skip this video as there's probably nothing new for you in it. So with all that said, let's get started. So now here is everything that's going to come in the base kit for the Mavic 2 Pro. If you have a Mavic 2 Zoom, you can follow along to this guide still because a lot of it is going to be the same. So in the base kit, we're going to have the aircraft, we're going to have a charger and the cable for the charger, we're going to have a remote, some extra sticks for the remote, some cables, six props, and uh, a USB connector here. Now we're going to start with the aircraft, so I'm going to take all this stuff and set it aside out of the way. So now I've had my aircraft up in the air, but yours is going to have stickers on it. So at this point, you want to go ahead and remove all the stickers. So we're going to go ahead and unfold the aircraft now. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to pull the front arms out first, and they just fold out like that. And these back legs kind of fold down and out. Just like that. Now there are several things that we need to do before we can take our first flight. Uh, the first thing we're going to have to do is charge up the batteries. But I just want to show you a few things here before we get started. Um, on this aircraft, it's covered in sensors. Uh, there's two at the back, there's two at the front here, there's two at the side, there's two at the bottom, and another infrared there. And those are LED lights. And there's also one here at the top. Now drones are getting easier and easier to fly, and with the addition of all these sensors that makes it that much easier, you don't have to worry so much in the beginning about running into things. So the battery comes shipped, installed in the aircraft. So let's go ahead and remove it. We're just going to press the side buttons there and pull out. Now this battery is in hibernation mode, and I know that because when I press on the button it doesn't do anything. That's actually an LED light around the outside, and that's what dictates when the aircraft is powered on, but it can also show us how much charge is in the battery. So GDI ships their drones with the batteries in hibernation mode. To take the batteries out of hibernation mode, you just simply need to plug it into the charger. And just to show you here, here's a battery that has a charge in it, and it's already been activated. When I press the button, you can see it illuminates, and it shows you how much charge is in the battery just by those LED lights. It's split into four quarters. So to charge up our battery, we're going to take the charging block that came with the drone and the power cable. Now while we're at it, we're going to charge up the remote because we need both to have a good charge before we get started. But before we plug everything in, I just want to show you here. There's a USB port right there, and that can be used to charge any kind of device. You can plug a smartphone in there, you could plug your remote in there, but the remote actually has its own built-in cable right there. You can see that, we pull that out. That reveals a micro USB cable, and that's what we're gonna use to charge the remote. So you're gonna grab your remote, and uh, we're gonna take a closer look at this coming up, but for now, we're just gonna pull this USB cable. We're just gonna unplug it temporarily, and then we're gonna take this micro USB cable and plug it into where that one was. So it's just gonna plug in there like that. And right away you're going to see that it's charging up on the screen and it'll give you a percentage. Now I just want to mention too, be very careful plugging in these micro USB cables. They tend to be damaged quite easily and I've seen it before and I've actually damaged one myself. So just make sure they're lined up properly. You've got it the right way around and that way you don't do any damage to your remote. So we're back with our battery that is in hibernation mode. So all we're going to do is plug in the battery. Just line up that little side notch there with the side notch on the battery and just plug it in and right away you're going to notice it light up and there we go so this battery is now activated so at this point you're just going to let things charge up uh, it could take anywhere from an hour to an hour and a half to charge the batteries so just uh, be patient let everything charge up fully and then i'll be right back so i'm back now this battery is fully charged if we press the button you can see that it's all illuminated so we're good to go so we're just going to disconnect that battery for the time being and we're going to unplug the remote don't forget to plug that usb cable back in. Now if you purchased the Flymore combo, you would have got two extra components. You would have got a charging hub and a car charger. You can use this car charger to charge all your batteries the same way. They just plug in like that. The charging hub is quite a handy thing to have because it allows you to charge four batteries. Now it doesn't charge all four batteries at once. If you have four batteries plugged in, it's going to charge each battery from the one that is the fullest down to the one that is the emptiest. And the reason it does that is if you have a battery that's at 50% and one that's at 30%, it's gonna start charging the one at 50% first, that way you can get up and flying quicker. 
So to use the hub, we're gonna take this end and we're gonna plug it in there like that. So there we go, we have three batteries plugged in. So all batteries will be charged. So it doesn't charge your batteries any quicker, but it's convenient because you don't have to babysit the batteries. You don't have to come down and replace each one and uh, plug the next one in. You can plug them all in, walk away, come back a few hours later, and they'll all be charged. So we're ready to reinstall the battery in the aircraft. We're just gonna put it in its cradle and just press down till it clicks. It's a good idea to double check to make sure it's in there nice and firm. We can press the button again and it shows us that it's fully charged. So now it's time to put on the propellers. So you would have got six propellers with your kit, uh, four for the aircraft and two spares. So now there's two types of propellers. And if we look at the top of them, you can see here, this one has a little gray circle around it and this one doesn't. So we need two of the ones with the gray circle and two of the ones without. So basically to line the propellers up, we're just gonna line up the gray circle to the circle that's on the motor. You can see there's a gray circle there. And on this motor, there's not a gray circle, gray circle and not a gray circle. So we're just gonna line those up just like that. So basically these two props are identical and these two props are identical. And to put them on, you can put them on when they're in their folded state or you can open them up. So basically you're just gonna line up those three little notches to the three notches on the motor. You're gonna press down and then twist. And just double check to make sure they're on there securely. And you're just gonna repeat that for all the props. Just like that. So now let's take a closer look at the remote. At the bottom here, we're gonna see these arms that fold out, just like that. And that's where we're gonna be mounting a phone and that's gonna be our display. At the bottom here, you'll notice that it has two joysticks and they just come out like that and screw in. And that's a nice feature of this uh, drone and the Mavic Air is that they have those removable joysticks and uh, you know that makes transport a lot easier. And now your antennas will pop out just like that. Basically we have an LCD screen here that's gonna give you some different information about your flight speed, battery levels, and different things like that. We have our two joysticks here, left and right. We have a 5D button here, and I don't know if I'm gonna get into that for this tutorial. I'm gonna make a more advanced one shortly after, and I think we'll get into that. We have our power button there. We have return to home button here. On the side here we have a toggle switch and we can switch between some different flight modes. In the middle it stands for P, that's your normal default one that you'll be flying in most of the time. And that stands for positioning mode, sport mode if you slide it that way, and tripod mode if you slide it that way. Sport mode makes the aircraft very agile and very fast. If this is going to be your first time flying a drone I wouldn't go into sport mode for a while until you got a good feel of the aircraft. Tripod mode is really nice. It basically slows everything down, makes all your movements very slow, and uh, that can make for some nice video footage. Sometimes jerky movements uh, don't look very nice, so putting it into tripod mode slows everything down and uh, makes it less responsive, so if you hammer down on a stick, it's not going to uh, be as jerky. On the top of the remote here, we have a photo button and we have a record button. We got two wheels. This one controls the angle of the camera and this one adjusts your EV compensation. Again, we'll get into that in a more advanced tutorial. So on the bottom here, we have two buttons that can be customized. This one is called the C1, this one's a C2. Now by default, what they're set for is if you press this one, the camera will point straight down. If you press this one, it will bring up your advanced camera settings. On the bottom here, we have a full-size USB port, and that's mainly used if you're gonna be connecting this to an iPad. They have different mounts to mount your iPad up higher, and that's where you would plug the iPad into. Your phone, when it's mounted, is plugged into the side here, and as you can see, it has this cable already pre-installed, and it is set up for iPhones. But DJI leaves no man behind, so they include different cables for different types of phones. For example, this one here is a USB-C, and this one here is a micro USB. So if you have a phone that has a USB-C connector, like the new Samsungs, so if you need to swap out one of these cables, all you do is unplug it from the side there, and you're just gonna push this whole unit out, just like that, and you wanna take that little frame. There's a little plastic piece in there, and it can be a little tricky to get out, just like that. And the reason we're taking that little plastic piece out is because these ones already have one attached to it. So to install the other cable, we're just gonna take the micro USB end, again, be very careful, and just pop it in there like that. So now what we're gonna do is take this end and pop it in this little opening. And um, it's a little tricky, 
but uh, just don't use too much force but just kind of wiggle it in there just like that and now you can see it's installed so now at this point we're going to mount our phone so what you want to do is download the DJI Go 4 app and you can download it for free from the App Store or the Google Play Store we're just going to slide the phone in and then you're just going to line up your lightning port and press it in now before we fire up the aircraft for the first time we have to remove our gimbal protector and uh, there's a little clamp at the back there you're just going to pull on it and it just slides out this clamp is multi-purpose it actually protects the camera the lens but it also has this little back piece and that prevents the gimbal from rocking around when it's being uh, carried in a backpack or something so very important to put that back on too when you're transporting it so now we are basically ready to go now what we're going to do is we're going to fire up the aircraft for the first time and there's a couple things that need to be done before we can actually even do anything. The first is activating the aircraft and the second will be updating the firmware. There has been some firmware updates since these have shipped and it's very important to get the latest firmware. It first gives you all the new features that they've added since this was uh, shipped but it also fixes errors and problems that could arise so it's very important to always fly with the latest firmware. So now to power things on what we're going to do is we're going to turn the remote on first and uh, how we do that this is our power button and it takes a double press so what we're going to do is we're going to press the button quickly and then a second time but that time holding it down so we're going to press and then press again you'll see that little animation on the screen and now it's in connecting mode so right now it's looking for an aircraft so it'll stay in connecting until we power on the drone and the drone is the same way we do one quick press and then one long press right afterwards so press long press Now you're going to see your gimbal, you can't really see it on film here because of the way it's angled, but uh, it does all kinds of crazy stuff there, so don't let that alarm you. It's going to rock around, fold down, fold up. Basically it's kind of somewhat of a calibration, it's trying to find its level spot. Now what you're going to notice here is that the screen lights up. Once it's connected to the drone, it can get the data from the drone, and now this screen has all the information on it. So basically, at this point, what we're going to do is we're just going to launch our DJI Go 4 app, and that's going to take us to this main screen. Now, if it's not listed as Mavic 2, you know, it could be something else. All we're going to do is hit this drop-down arrow, and we're going to pick the device. So if yours was set to, say, the Spark, you can just simply select the Mavic 2. So right away, you can see here that we have some firmware updates and we have to activate the drone. So let's just click on activate. So we just got a message there that we've successfully activated. So now we will go in and we will update the uh, firmware. You can see here at the bottom, it tells us exactly what uh, it's gonna be updating. So let's go ahead and download it. So what it's gonna do here, you can see here it's downloading, if you can uh, see that on the screen. Uh, it's going to go ahead and download it and then just start updating the firmware. Uh, your drone most likely will reboot. The uh, remote will probably reboot. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pause this video while it's doing its firmware update. Once it's done, then I'll be back. Okay, so we've gone ahead and we successfully upgraded the firmware. Now you will have a green bar appear along the top of your screen telling you that it was successful. So one thing I do want to point out here quickly is that we've updated the firmware for the drone the remote and the battery that's attached to the drone. These batteries are considered intelligent flight batteries and uh, they have firmware too. So if you have ordered the Flymore combo, you will have two extra batteries and these batteries will need the firmware to be updated as well. So to update them, you just follow the same steps. You're just gonna power the drone off. You can leave this uh, hooked up, put the new battery in, power it up, and you will get a message come up on the screen that says inconsistent firmware. And all that means is that the drone is at a certain version, but the batteries are at a different version. So it'll give you a little bar, you just swipe it to the side, and it will update the batteries. And uh, it won't take as long as updating the drone. The drone firmware update takes about 10 minutes or longer. Uh, doing the batteries will only take you a matter of a minute or so. So now we're going to get ready to take our first flight. There's a couple things I want to go over with you with the menu and uh, a couple things about the drone that we need to do before our first flight. And that's mainly to do with calibrating. There's a couple different things that need to be calibrated in the drone. One is the compass and one is the IMU. 
and it's a good idea to calibrate them before you fly. It's a really good idea when you get a brand new drone to calibrate the IMU. You should also calibrate it after a crash if you've uh, crashed the drone or it's had a hard knock then it's a good idea to calibrate it as well. So now we're gonna click the start flight button. Now this isn't gonna launch the drone, this is just gonna bring up the Go4 app and give us all the extra controls. So we click start flight and there we go. Now for this video, I'm not gonna go over all the menus and different settings. There's a lot to it, so I'm gonna save that for a separate video. But what I am gonna do is gonna go over some of the most common things that you need to know for your first flight. So here we are here and uh, we're just going to go over some of the most common things you need to know to get going. The first thing, this DJI logo here at the top, if you click that, that'll take you back to the main screen. Up here, you can see it's yellow and it says ready to go vision. That means it's in vision mode and we're not connected to any GPS satellites. And that's due to me being indoors. Over here where we see the little icon of the satellite, it would list how many satellites we're connected to. Once you're connected to satellites, this bar will turn green and it'll say ready to go. You really don't want to fly it, especially if you're new until that turns green. Now the next one down here, this is our takeoff button. There's two ways you can take off, but for a new user, that's probably your best bet. When we click on it, you can see there that it gives us a little prompt to slide to take off. I'm just gonna go ahead and cancel that because I don't wanna crash the drone indoors. Once the aircraft is taken off, that will change to a landing button. This next icon here is the return home. If you get into trouble or you lose it up in the sky, you just click the return home and the drone will come right back to where it took off from. This next button here is our intelligent flight modes. And if we click on that, you can see it has all different flight modes that we can do. Now we're not gonna get into all the flight modes for this beginner's guide, but uh, that is where you find them. The next is APAS. Right now it's disabled and it will be disabled when you first fire up your aircraft. Now basically, if you enable that, what it does is the drone tries to find its own route around obstacles. It's a handy little feature, but definitely it's not something you want to rely on too much. It works well, but it is not perfect, and uh, something definitely to play around with. The next, you'll see this whole slider along the top. You can see that it's green. When we're in flight, these two little dots here will turn to a flight remaining. It'll tell you how many minutes left you have in flight. And as you fly, this slider will come all the way down. This first little dot here is in the app is where it's going to give you a warning that you're getting low on battery. This next dot is where it's automatically going to return to home and land because it's getting critically low. Along the top here are some different camera settings, but again, that's going to be for a more advanced tutorial. I know it's not the best view, but uh, that is your sensors. And by default, you can see that it has green at the top green at the bottom and red at the side. That means right now the front sensors are active, the back sensors are active, but the two side ones are turned off. If we switch into tripod mode, they will all turn green or if we're doing any kind of active tracking. Now if we turn it to sport mode, the mode in which it allows us to fly faster, it'll turn to red and that's going to signify that we have no sensors enabled at all. Now if we go over to the right hand side here, this is the button that switches us from photo to video. This next button here is one of the ways you can trigger a photo or start recording. And right below it here is our advanced camera settings. This is where you're going to set your frame rate, your resolution, um, all the different aspects of the camera. And it can be very simple if you leave it in auto mode, but it can also get very advanced if you put it in manual. There are a lot of things that can be tweaked in there to make your imagery just superb. But again, we're going to get into that in a more advanced tutorial when we go over camera settings and different techniques that you can do there. So now that we've familiarized ourselves with the remote and the DJI Go 4 app, let's go ahead and update the IMU so we can put it up in the air for the first time. Now I'm going to link down in the description to a DJI video where it shows you step by step how to update your IMU. So go ahead and watch that and then we will continue. Okay folks, so we're outside. We are going to launch it. Now you want to wait until that bar turns green. You want to check your satellites. You can see that I have 10 there. Now I would not attempt what I'm doing here. I'm in a closed area, but for the sake of this video, it's okay. But if this is going to be your very first time flying, you're a new pilot, you're just learning, definitely go out to a wide open space. Make sure there's not a lot of people around. Uh, no obstacles like trees, buildings, somewhere where you can kind of get used to the controls and the sticks, you know, figure out the uh, movements and uh, get comfortable with it. Now, as for launching it, there's two ways to do it. We have the launch button there, which I showed you earlier in the video, but we can also do a stick movement to start the propeller. So I'll just show you here. If we take the right and left stick, 
and we go down and out, so down and then out, it's going to start the motors of the aircraft. And then to take off, we just push this button, which is up, and it will go and hover. It's going to hover at about a meter to a meter and a half. I'm not sure of the exact height, but uh, it'll just hover there until you're ready to give it a command. So I'll just show you there. I'm not going to launch it that way, but I'll just show you how to start the motors. So we're going to go down, out. You can see there it's now spinning. And we could take off just by pressing this uh, left joystick up. Now shut it off. Just hold down. And there we go. So now, probably as a new user, the best way is to use the takeoff button. So we're going to press it. We're going to get a little slider. So now when we're ready, we're just going to slide it over. Motors are going to start up. And then up it goes. So you can see it there hovering now. And it does a pretty good job holding in place. It's got the vision sensors in the bottom and it's got the uh, satellites. So we're gonna land it because it's actually pretty windy and I'm close to a lot of things. So let me uh, show you how to land it. So all we're gonna do is hit this landing button. And you can see it. There it comes down, it's gonna land and then the motors will shut off. So congratulations folks, we have just flown our Mavic Air for the first time. Now I know it can be very overwhelming at first, there's a lot to learn, and like I said we've just touched the tip of the iceberg with what this drone can do and the settings and all the different intelligent flight modes, and I'm going to cover them in upcoming videos. We're going to kind of dive into them a little bit deeper and uh, you know show you some of the amazing things these uh, drones are capable of. Now if I can offer any advice for a new pilot, uh, what I recommend is not to get too caught up in all the camera settings yet. You're probably watching a ton of videos on cinematic settings and the best video settings and that. I would recommend as a new pilot just to keep everything at auto for now because you're going to end up with great footage in auto regardless and uh, just focus on flying the drone. Get comfortable with it. The more you fly it, the more comfortable you'll get and uh, just work on your uh, motions, your panning and uh, just get to be a good pilot. You know, once you've mastered that and you're comfortable, then you can kind of go in and start tinkering with the camera and uh, playing with some of the settings. Now, before we go here, I want to talk about one other thing, and that is memory. The Mavic 2 Pro and the Mavic 2 Zoom come with eight gigabytes of built-in memory. Now, that's not very much. Um, you're gonna find that's gonna fill up very quickly. So ideally, you do wanna get some external memory cards. Uh, this is the one that I like and I recommend for drones like this. Uh, it's very fast and uh, you want a nice fast memory card for a drone like this. Now what I'll do is I'll include the links down below where you can order this specific memory card. And I'll just show you here quickly how to install it. So if we flip the aircraft over, you're going to notice two ports here. And uh, one of them, this one here, is a linking button. And basically that button is how you would link the aircraft to the remote. For some reason, if you ever go to turn it on and it doesn't want to connect, uh, you would use that button to do a linking. On the other side here is where our memory port is. You can see it there. So we're just going to take the memory card, if you can see it there, it's kind of tiny, and we're just going to slide it in. We're going to have the logo facing up, or I guess towards the bottom here, and we're just going to push it in, and there we go. So now 64 gigabytes is plenty of space. You might want to pick up two, and that way you have a spare in case you happen to fill a card. Well, folks, at this point, I invite you to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. If you've recently purchased the Mavic 2 Pro or the Mavic 2 Zoom, or you plan on purchasing one, I will be doing a lot of different tutorials and different technique videos on how to get the most out of it. We'll cover all different subjects from transferring the media, how to edit them, um, how to get nice cinematic settings, uh, best camera settings, different things like that, different aerial moves. If you haven't purchased your Mavic 2 Pro yet and you plan on buying one, I have the links down below where you can go directly to the DJI store to purchase it. My affiliate ID is embedded into those links and what I do is I get a small commission for every time somebody buys it through one of my links. So if you enjoy my channel and you enjoy the videos I make, it's a great way to support my channel. It doesn't cost you anything extra and it helps me uh, continue. So yeah, that would be greatly appreciated. Anyways, folks, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. And we'll see you in the next one.